<laughs> Honey kidding. Most of these videos you see a big sweaty hand come across and with a load of laboured breathing they manage to light it. Anyway, welcome back to the steam shed. But today it's not steam, it's an auto engine. The Moyer engine. It's a nice little basic engine. Designed by Dr. James Senth, I think. Most are quite elaborate on legs. This is on stainless steel. Well, they've done a good job of bending the stainless steel. Better than I could ever do anyway. Anyway, I've always wanted to know how these are going to work, so I'm going to pull it apart, learn about it, and perhaps I might even make one. Let's get on with it. Okay, the engine is now disassembled. I had to change the venue to my soundproof workshop because I was in the shed, but the carpets next door were arguing over the barbecue and it was spoiling the filming. So, anyway, here we are. I took a few measurements. Blast flywheel there, if 50 mil in diameter, 50 mil wide. The same there with a small crank wheel, 28 mil diameter, 6 mil wide. That is one of the supports, as you can see, 55 by 33. Uh, just a simple turn press, pressed burn in that, nothing special, no ball burn. Here the ball burn race, I think you can get them about 10 mil, it will be better. Uh, Got the crank there. They're 29 mil long. See the marks, the engineering marks, everything lines up. That's a quite a nice uh, detail there. And the 7 mil square. Then the power piston. 18 mil long, 14 mil in diameter. A nice detail though. In fact, they put the, they've put grooves in it. I think that's felt out the oil that. Because you get the oil in the grooves and it helps the uh, keep it airtight. That's the detail of the oak, so I'll just get in focus there. So that's quite easy to make, to attach the rod to the bottom of the power piston. On the end, that's adjustable. And that's to get you, so excuse the monkey thumb, that's to get the right height in the piston because it has to be about a millimetre off the bottom. So you can adjust that up and down to get the, the piston the optimum distance. See, so engine one's lovely. Right. Oh, yeah. Inside, there you can see. Lovely smooth bore. I think it's been honed. This is steel. Some people do use brass, there's nothing wrong with that. I think I'd use brass because it's easy to machine. And the most interesting bit sorry, is the displays of the piston, which I've not opened up yet, which I'm really interested in. I'd like to see how they made it. Um, don't know, it feels quite light. I'll do some investigating in that. That's a view down the bow. You're probably not going to get in this light. So I'll do a better video on that. Right, I move the camera, and you can just about see down the bore. You might be able to see the little hole, and that connects the two together. If I take this off, there should be a plug, and they're drilled right through, and that connects the two pistons together. So the otter then goes to the cold air piston, it expands and contracts, and that's what powers the motor. I think I've sussed out how they've done this. You see a little join there. I think he's, mach he's machined it all off. They put a cap on it. I can't get it off. I think it's been glued on. And the cap makes it airtight. Can you see that? Interesting though. The displacer does fit quite loosely. It's got at least a good one and a half millimetre all the way around it. So, there you go. That's how you build a Stirling engine. Oh, well, that's been helpful. That's about 56 mil long, that. By about 18 mil in diameter. Thanks for viewing. The Stirling engine is now reassembled and the flame is lit. I did have a bit of a blonde moment as I cocked up 
the crank time in here, I think I had it about this position here, and the engine was trying to run backwards, and it was like a battleship, it nearly bloody shook itself off the table. But I think I've sorted it out now, so I'll give it a go. The burner is quite nice, it's solid copper, it's been bored out and a little cap put in the bottom and it has a little, it has a little breather there, that's where we put the fuel in, it's quite neat. So there you go, so I hope that's been helpful for you, thank you for viewing and come again.